opening to us chat. I actually kind of want to open up this last like five minutes up just to random questions. Do you guys have anything you guys want us to address? I see Upz says you risk cry every time you play. Um, that was the one that I was responding yeah, to about stretching. You know, just make sure that you emotionally you take care of your wrists. You talk to your wrist, um, you support it with a social <laughs> social engagement, you know. Um, no, the, we, we got over that. We got we got that question. But if you guys have any questions, post in chat. We'll yeah. start going through them, you know, because we have people here. We have people watching. Um, in the, the meantime, questions? you guys should, if you are coming to Genesis, we will have a booth there. You should oh, yeah. definitely stop by. We will also answer questions in person. Um, if you challenge Matt to a push-up contest, he'll probably accept. Uh, yeah, I just did one. Um, so I've been doing a lot of assessments recently for oh, gosh. some teams. And it's how many push-ups you can uh, fit, you can perform in two minutes. You can pace it as as quickly or as slowly as possible. And, you know, I'm, I'm actually, I'm a little disappointed, but I was only able to get to 73. But someone you else win. beat me. Someone else beat me. He got 80 and I was just like, ah. I think my all-time record is 76, and it was because a patient really didn't want to um, he didn't want to do the balance program I had planned from that day. And he told me that if I could do more push-ups than he could, he would do whatever exercises I wanted no that day. Way. And if he could do more push-ups than me, uh, he got to do whatever he wanted. I did 76 push-ups to win. Okay. That's All right. So damn. we got a whole bunch of questions. Excellent. Okay. Um, from Metroid, any thoughts on realistic expectations for sleep times when you've got a busy schedule? School plus part-time wow. jobs. Oh boy, can we talk about this one? What are the chances? I appreciate this seg segue because as it happens, we're actually starting a series on sleep that's going live on our site right after this. Um, and both of Metroid us are busy and doing too many things. We did not plant Metroid, I swear. <laughs> um, but a couple things to keep in mind. One, there is nothing wrong with a nap during the day to help supplement your sleep. You don't want to make Very it a true. super long nap because that, that can actually further disrupt your sleep schedule. But a short 20 to 30 minute nap, totally fine. Also good, caffeine naps, where you drink a cup of coffee, then you take the nap, and then you wake up. Because caffeine takes about 20 minutes to get into your system. Uh, so by the time you've woken up, the caffeine's hitting your system, and you're getting the benefits of the sleep. Um, but if you're going to bed right after drinking the cup of coffee, obviously you're not feeling the effects of caffeine because you've fallen asleep immediately, hopefully. Um, if you're going to sleep at night and you know you've got limited time, um, sleeping in kind of increments of 90-ish minutes is going to help you feel less groggy. The reason for that is your sleep cycle. So all the way from light sleep down to deep sleep and back up again, um, that's about 90 to 120 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see what else. Your circadian rhythm in general refers to that whole awake and asleep cycle. Um, there's, there's points when you're at your best for performance, um, and they are in the afternoon slash evening if you're going to bed around... 10 o'clock-ish, 11 o'clock-ish, midnight-ish, um, because that's when your body temperature is the highest. Um, and as far as sleeping goes, towards the end of the day, as you're getting less exposure to light, ideally, that's when your body should be winding down to, for sleep. The reason that lack of light goes along with winding down for sleep is because light inhibits the production of melatonin, which is your sleep hormone. It's what tells your brain, okay, time to go to sleep now, we're crashing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you've got bright light, like the one shining in my eyes right now, um, you're telling your brain, it's awake time, be awake, be awake, awake, and no melatonin is produced. So if you're on your computer, on your phone, watching TV until right before you go to bed, you've been giving your brain all of these signals, I want to stay awake. And so just because you suddenly decide to close your eyes and have the room be dark doesn't mean that your brain has wound down for that, doesn't mean you've got melatonin going, which means longer time to fall asleep and longer time and uh, more difficulty with sleeping. So the exactly. single biggest thing that you can do to improve your sleep, sleep quality and your sleep duration, if you are short on time, put down the phone, the camera, and turn off the TV minimum 30 minutes, preferably 90 minutes before you go to bed. Yeah. I also um, want to add that another super easy habit you can add is just the first thing in the morning, you got to get sun. I promise absolutely. you, if you try this and you do it consistently for an entire week, it will not only set your circadian rhythm up, but you will feel, if you also add the no screen before uh, bed 30 minutes, you will feel tired. 
you will have the tired sensation because light is the main cue that helps us understand what our schedule is, tells our body what our schedule is. Um, but also getting getting back to his question, you try for at least six. I think you should get for, to at least seven to seven and a half. I know with you, school plus a part-time job, that's not that's not easy to manage. So yeah. what I would what I would recommend is you need to plan, right? Planning allows us to uh, make better decisions for an entire schedule. And mm-hmm. if you aim and utilize seven and a half or seven as a minimum as your guideline or guidepost, then you can plan around that and say, hey, I need to get in bed by this time because it takes me X amount of time to fall asleep uh, from time to bed to time to sleep. And I want to get seven and a half hours. That's when I get to bed. And, I, and you have to do that. And one also, it's like it's super easy and it's often said, but if you have a consistent schedule, it makes everything way easier. A lot yep. of us, we let our schedule dictate how we live, right? Oh, I have something at 10 tomorrow morning. I guess I'm waking up at 930. No, like you got to, if you're waking up at 8 a.m. every single day on in the weekday, and then all of a sudden on the weekend, you're like, finally, I get to sleep in 12 hours. That's what I used to do in college all the time. But now that... I'm on a more consistent and pretty much busy schedule like you. I need to wake up and go to sleep at roughly the plus minus one hour because it helps me wake up feeling refreshed because my body knows that it's the time to wake up. But also, I get tired at the same time every single day, right? And there's all these other things that we can do to help, but I think uh, we can get into a lot more depth in the actual article. Yeah, so you're definitely going to want to keep your eyes peeled for these articles that we're posting, but like kind of the three big things, aim for seven and a half if you can. Uh, screens off 30 to 90 minutes before bedtime, get sunlight first thing in the morning. And if you're in a time zone where, like me, the sun is not rising until mm, well after I'm awake, um, you can also get, uh, I have what's called a, a sad lamp or a sun lamp. It's for seasonal affective oh, disorder. Sunflash. Yep. Um, just pop it on. I get light in the morning while I'm like just moving around, getting started. Um, those are the three biggest things you can do right now. Check out the articles for more stuff. I swear we didn't put him in here just to show the articles, really. Right. So um, our next question, we got our, our, our best our best patron. What up, Percy? Percy, um, the question is, if you sit down for 13 plus hours a day, are there good stretches to counteract oh, that? So there's a lot of I, ways. Can that I we give can... one? I yes. have a perfect yes. one. I got my favorite one for my anti-sitting stretches. Do it. I just realized I'm wearing pajama pants. I was not expecting my pants to be seen on video today, but all right, we're all going to see my pajama pants. Nice. So, standing lunge, one foot forward, one foot back, stretch, pushing your back hip down towards the ground, kind of on a diagonal like this. A bonus, squeeze your ass, tighten your abdomen, and you'll feel it yep. more. Yep, it's like you're tucking your butt underneath you. Here, you can see it now. I'm stretching through here. I feel it right here. And then you can also sensitize it. She can raise her right arm up overhead and then lean to her left and that will sensitize that stretch or make it stronger. stronger. You'll feel mm-hmm. it more. Yeah, more. Um, but zooming out, right? Sitting thir- 13 plus hours oh, a day, no. I think um, one thing I like to recommend most people is that, hey, understand how you're sitting. Right. And I have this uh, low back pain med kit article that says, hey, are you sitting in this rounded posture or are you sitting in this extended posture? And based on that, we expect certain things to be stiff or weak or, or whatever. And you can do exercises to address those impairments as a, as a break. So, uh, Percy, if you sit in the rounded posture, which is what we typically see in a lot of people that sit for prolonged periods of time, I would explore some of those exercises as a gaming, as a as a work break or as a gaming break, and then of course, everything else that we talked about. You got to schedule some breaks and you got to get up and walk. Um, those are some things yeah. that will help you counteract the expected stress on the muscles, tissues, tendons, ligaments that occur over time from sitting for long periods of time. And I will look up that right now and post it in the chat. Sure. Um, you can also, so, so adding in, uh, if possible, like if, if it's at all an option to have a desk that allows you to spend time sitting as well as standing, um, there's, you know, there's, there's been all kinds of articles about how, uh, sitting is the new smoking. So everybody should be standing at their desks. Well, the thing is we know that from, from research with folks who stand all day, like cashiers, that standing all day is just as hard on your body as sitting all day is. 
the most important thing you can do is to change your posture. Your best posture is your next posture. Oh yeah. Uh, yes. Ideal. Ideally you want to be in somewhat of a neutral posture, right? Where your back is kind of nice and straight, where your back is supported. Um, but shifting that position. So you've probably noticed me shifting throughout today. And that's partly because I'm short and my feet don't comfortably touch, touch the ground in my Same. chair unless I have a foot rest in place. But it's also because shifting helps me change my posture consistently. And that's more comfortable, right? So I'm shifting from a cross-legged position to like one leg over the other, stretching my piriformis a little bit to just sitting straight up with both feet on the floor to sitting with both knees bent up towards my chest a little bit more, shifting positions frequently. Um, and even better, standing up to change position frequently is the way to go. Yeah. There's no and doubt. let's see, Loganok asked us, what is the best motivation tip you guys can give for getting into fitness above 30 plus? That's a good question. I like the motivation part of this. I have a really good story for this. Go for your story. So Loganok, um, when I first graduated uh, physical therapy school, I was working in an orthopedic clinic and I had this evaluation. I saw it on the schedule. It's this big red block and it says evaluation, 60 minutes, or at the time it was 30 minutes. And I look up his case to see what, what it was. And he was a 70 year old male and he had knee pain. So the first thing I think about when I hear that after coming out of school and probably what Kate thinks of is probably total knee. Arthritis. Yeah, arthritis, osteoarthritis. He's gonna be old and come in on a cane. And then- Oh God, I'm already anticipating where the story's gone. But the first thing that I see, all right, he comes in, seven o'clock hits, and this is him. He goes, he's literally like prancing in here into the clinic. And I was like, what? Is this legit? And yeah, so I start the evaluation. I'm like, hey, how can I help you? Uh, and he says, yeah, you know what? Uh, I play tennis like three to four days a week. And I also do dance uh, two to three times a week. And I just kind of tweaked my knee a little bit. Can you help me? And that hit that exact moment hit me so hard because it told me and showed me that movement, literally a, a healthy and consistent schedule of exercise and movement goes such a long way and and if i every single patient that i talked to that was osteoarthritis 80 years old they already had two knee replacements i asked them what their day-to-day -day was like oh i just sit and watch tv oh i don't really like traveling oh i don't really like going out and i just kind of like staying at home you are the sum of your postures and positions and movements that you assume throughout the day if you sit guess what you're going to be sitting for you're going to get really stiff and you're going to have really weak muscles realize it's never too late Right? If a 70 year old can play tennis four times a week, dance two times a week, then it's not like 30 plus, you can get started and be amazing. And this is yeah. even, this is probably the best time to, yeah. to get started. And because... I can, Matt, I can actually one up your story. I'm not, I, I swear Sorry. I'm not a chronic one upper, but I can one up this one particular story. Okay. I was working in the hospital. I come into this patient's room. She's like a little tiny 104 year old lady. In fact, she's Whoa. made it to 104 should, you know, be Whoa. good enough. Whoa. Right. Um, so we get up, we start walking. My job is to assess her and see if she's safe to go home. I mean, she's walking decently well, you know, her balance is a little bit off, but she's been in bed on meds for, you know, a couple of days. She had something going on with um, just like a, like a chronic vestibular condition. But I'm asking her, you know, what are your goals? Cause I, you know, I, you know, I obviously want to be able to get you home, get you walking, get you up and down the stairs, but what kind of things do you want to get back to doing? And she's like, well, I want to know when I can go back to the YMCA. And I was like, oh, no. damn, all right. It's 104 year old no. ladies legit. I was like, oh, what, what classes do you take there? And she's like, no, I teach the chair aerobics class. What? 104? 104. Where is this class? <laughs> Arlington, Virginia, get down here. Oh my God, I need to go. So what, what we're telling by these stories is that if you want to be the 104 year old lady teaching chair aerobics and the 70 year old playing tennis, or even just the 70 and or 104 year old who isn't in massive amounts of pain and is comfortably able to do whatever things they want to do, now's a great time to start. Oh my um, God, that's insane. Don't feel like you have to go with the absolute optimal style or amount of exercise right so like 
the ACSM uh, makes recommendations about here's how much people should be getting in a day. And the recommendation is 150 hours per week, which is 30 minutes a day. Or sorry, not 150 hours, 150 minutes. Just 30 exercise. minutes a day of exercise. Yeah. Um, if you want to try and hit that goal, which is a good goal to hit, it doesn't even have to be 30 minute chunks of exercise. It could be 10 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes around lunchtime and 10 minutes in the evening. It could be like three 10 minute walks. That would be a perfectly good way to get it. Um, it doesn't have to be walks if walks bore you. Walks bore the crap out of me. I like rock climbing. Rock climbing's exciting. Yeah. Rock I'm gonna climbing, go rock climbing after this. this. Maybe you hate heights. Maybe you enjoy dancing. Maybe you enjoy yoga. Maybe you love pole dance classes. Like, fuck it. Whatever thing you want to do right. that will make you move, do that I'm thing. I'm probably a really good pole dancer. Just I bet you'd be a great I'd, pole dancer, Matt. Probably really good. Uh, we should take a poll class together sometime and see about that. Okay. Okay. Actually, I, I, I totally regret saying that. I totally regret saying uh, that. <laughs> but the point is, you don't have to, you don't have to, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. Don't let this idea that I have to get 150 minutes and a certain amount of it has to be aerobics and a certain amount of it has to be resistance training. training. Doing something will always do you better than doing nothing. If you only walk for five minutes in a day, you are still doing better than walking not at all. Exactly. If you only lift, you know, with five pound weights for your bicep curls, that is better than doing no bicep curls at all. Yeah. Um, so don't let yourself be kind of dragged down by if you miss a day, if something goes wrong, if you mess up, keep moving forward. Yeah. I Do the say, next say, right thing. Exactly. Let yourself be the internal reference point or, or let yourself be the reference point for progress, right? A lot of the times we focus on what other people are doing or how much they exercise because everyone realistically, they showcase the highlight of their lives, right? The highlight reel of their lives on Twitter, Instagram, yeah. whatever. And they're exercising five, five times a week to go in 50 minutes a day. But that's not where everyone is. I mean, realistically, we just need to figure out where we are. And if I... If I haven't been exercising at all, then I would be happy with doing 10 minutes a day of walking or putting on my running shoes and running to the end of the street and back. It starts with tiny habits and that helps create consistent consistency. So remember that it's not about jumping or diving in all the way to the deep end. You start at the shallow end, make those consistent steps, feel comfortable in the shallow end. And then when you're stronger, right, or when you have more confidence in the shallow end or when you have more confidence to do the basic things that you've been doing with with exercise like running a little bit then you can build it up over time but be comfortable with just the the small habit that's that's yeah. honestly a little hack that helps build consistency and once you build consistency too there's there's kind of this really great virtuous cycle that happens willpower is not a it's it's a finite resource but you can build it up the same way that you build up your endurance in other capacities so the more you continue to do the next right thing, the more you consistently do some kind of movement, the easier it becomes to do that kind of movement. And there's all kinds of, you know, fun neurological and psychological benefits to exercise that, you know, get you hooked on it and make you keep moving. But starting now from, from zero, knowing that doing the next right thing and doing it consistently will make it easier to do it consistently is, is really helpful to getting started. Yeah. So I, I think that's uh, that's all the questions we'll be answering today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. The one thing I want to leave you guys with is that there's a 104-year-old lady uh, that's teaching chair aerobics, and <laughs> we all need to go and attend that class to see, one, if Kaylin is making this up, but two, she's badass. She's probably super badass. Like, Oh, uh, the oh best part God. was... I, I asked her what her secret was, and I thought she was going to say something about movement or exercise, and she was like, take a shot of whiskey a day since I was 16. What? Who is this legend? She's a I legend. I can't tell you her name because HIPAA. She's a legend. I need her. We need to meet her. We need to. Interview her for 1HP. Jeez. Do her tear aerobics what? class. We need to get her on Fortnite or something. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Anyways, anyways. Uh, All right, guys. Thanks hey, for joining. Thank you guys us. so much. Um, we'll be back. We, we're back every month. Sometimes we do pop up stream streams for random stuff. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. We will see you guys soon. All right. Have uh, a good night, folks. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>